So you built your first large language model application and suddenly leadership stops you just before going to production. They've heard about potential problems with LLMs, such as hallucinations, inconsistencies, and constant change. And they ask you a good question. How will you prove it works and ensure it keeps working? Fortunately, you watched this video and you have an answer. You have an evaluation framework. Large language models or LLMs like GPT-4 are intelligent reasoning software functions that empower you to build solutions orders of magnitude faster and cheaper than before. And that's why applications built with LLMs will dominate all software at your company. Unfortunately, this reasoning power comes with some problems. The models produce inconsistent outputs and they can hallucinate or even lie. This is a challenge because predictability and consistency are critical for building reliable systems. Oh, oh it, it, it it's, uh, simply uh, deals with uh, predictability in complex systems. Fortunately, we can begin achieving these goals with evaluation frameworks. Evaluation frameworks are software functions that ensure your LLM system is working as expected. They allow you to measure the impact of changes such as new models or different prompts. Let's look at an example. We created an evaluation framework for the solution we demonstrated in episode four, Unified NLQ against a multi-table database. This application allows a bank manager to get into a conversation about customer data without relying on static dashboards, reports, or application screens. The core function is generating the correct SQL code to answer the user's questions, and this requires an agent to develop and execute a plan for gathering the data across multiple tables. Since the two most important aspects of this solution are the model and the agent instruction, we're going to attempt to answer two questions in our framework. First, which model performs best? Second, which agent instruction performs best? Choosing a different model is simply a matter of changing the API called OpenAI, and we will compare GPT-4 with GPT-3.5. Let's look at the three different agent instructions we're going to evaluate. We started with the React approach based on a popular and well-written research report. Unfortunately, we quickly discovered that simple agent instructions work better, so that's the one we used in episode four. Since then, we've tweaked one sentence in the simple instructions to make it less verbose, and we'll refer to this as simple quiet instructions. So we've got three versions of the instructions we're giving to the agent. React, simple, and simple quiet. Let's look at our evaluation framework. We created five scenarios combining different agent instructions and models. For example, scenario one evaluates the React agent with the GPT-4 large language model. We then ran different questions through each scenario 10 times and averaged the results. An example question is, who most recently opened a checking account? We're going to evaluate each scenario using four metrics. The number of API calls required to answer the question. Since OpenAI charges for API calls, this is a good proxy for cost. The time it takes to get the answer in seconds. The percentage of time it returns no answer due to failures, such as exceeding the LLM's context window. Finally, and most importantly, whether it gets the correct answer. Let's take a look at the results. We're trying to determine which combination of agent instructions and models perform best in our application by making them answer four questions and evaluating them against four metrics. As you can see, we're getting a range of results. So let's pause and think about the business problem we're trying to solve. We're giving our bank manager the ability to get answers from simple questions about customers and products. Currently, their only options for getting these answers are guessing, learning how to program in SQL, or calling a meeting with their business intelligence team. So spending an extra penny or waiting another 20 seconds for a response is way better than the alternatives if they get the correct answer and it doesn't fail. Thus, we care most about a low failure rate and a high correct rate. So which combination of agent instructions and model is best? Well, the winner is pretty obvious and it isn't even close. The simple quiet model with GPT-4 nailed it. Since we can safely assume that our user, the bank manager, would care about getting accurate answers above all else, we can stop now. But let's see what we can learn from the other metrics. Let's start with the models. Not surprisingly, GPT-3.5 is faster than GPT-4, but GPT-4 produced better results. What is surprising is the effect of the agent instructions. Look how poorly the React instructions, those based on published research, perform. 
and look at the difference between the simple and simple quiet instructions. Remember the only difference between the two is changing a single sentence. If we were developing this solution for a client project, our next steps would be to expand the number of questions to cover a more representative set of what we expect users to do and then to do a deeper analysis on each one to ensure we can continue to deliver the correct answer at least 90% of the time. After that, we can begin optimizing for speed and other metrics, possibly by leveraging other specialized fine-tuned models. Hopefully this example convinces you of the critical importance of creating a quality evaluation framework for your LLM project. Without it, you will waste a massive amount of time tweaking your application and getting different results. You absolutely should create a summary like the one I showed you today and include it in your briefing materials to leadership. The code we used in this episode is open source and the links are in the show notes. I'm not going to spend any time walking through it because honestly it is a pretty straightforward Python script. The hardest part is knowing what questions to write and how to interpret the results. And that's why you need a customized evaluation framework for your project. You just can't rely on generic model evaluation frameworks like the MMLU. While potentially useful for evaluating the intelligence of models generally, what you really care about is how well your model performs in your business environment, not how well it writes Elizabethan poetry or tells you how long it takes t-shirts to dry. You must also carefully design questions that reflect how your customers will actually use the application. For example, multiple choice evaluation frameworks are popular in the research community, but potentially problematic because you pass the correct answer to the model in the question. Picking the best answer from five options is significantly easier than finding the correct answer from a database with 20 tables and millions of rows. 99% of what you read about AI is just hyper promotion. And there is very little practical advice for those of us building real solutions. If you are serious about being a leader in this once in a century technology revolution, then let's stay in touch. Like and subscribe and let us know your opinions in the comments below. And of course, sign up for our weekly newsletter so you don't miss a tip that could change your career. Links for everything are in the show notes and have a great day.